G'day everyone and welcome back to the shop. Um, just want to say a quick g'day to all my new subscribers. I've cracked the 250 which I am over the moon about. So thank you everyone who has subscribed. It's, it means a lot. Um, the next project. I'm going to build a wad punch. Here's a 5.8. Um, I know you can buy these cheap second hand or new they're not overly dear but that's not the challenge the challenge is to make one um, it's going to be for dad um, i'm going to make a three quarter one for him this is five eight but i'll make a three quarter um, i've got one here it's a three quarter i'm going to copy off that so it'll be similar to it um, so this is a piece of inch and a half, um, unknown material, got no idea what it is, but, um, it's got a bit of weight to it though, but I'll, I'm going to heat treat the end of it anyway, um, so the challenge is just to make it and see if, yeah, to make this one. My plan of attack is I'm going to mount this in the shaper and I'm going to take the two edges off. Um, so I'm going to take this edge off and this edge off. Then I'll be able to chuck it in the four jaw um, and do the front, which that is a better. 12 degree taper um, I'll be able to do the center ball um, I'll drill it then I'll bore it out and probably put a, a one degree taper on the inside um, then put it back in the shaper and shape this side off and this side off and hopefully <laughs> we should end up with something like this Theoretically, so I think that's the plan of attack. There is probably a thousand ways to do it. Um, best way to do it is probably go and buy one. But um, bugger it, build it. So I'm going to go and get all set up in the shaper. Uh, I've got to crunch a few numbers yet and see what. Um, yeah, so I've got to take off each side, work that out, and then um, start hacking away at it. That's a 53 depth to cut. This new vice seems a, a lot, there's no, the old vice you used to see a little bit of deflection in the, in the vice itself, but the base is absolutely huge on this. And I've got my hand there and then underneath, underneath the vice and I can't feel a single thing, there's no movement at all in it, it's bloody fantastic. Be a very good asset getting a new vice, I think. This old Tony got one of these vices, and um, he put it on the granite plate and it tested out really good. So, if that's got anything to run by, it's yeah, it should be a good thing. What we just said there in the, in the frame is I've got a future indicator set up on this side. Um, I'll just you know, use that to slowly sneak up under the edge, this edge. So. 
I'll just show you the way I measure this. Um, just got me a little more and right square, precision square. I'll bring this up a little bit there actually, sorry. Um, so I'll just touch it down there. 508. Pretty happy with that. Right to go for side two. Just take a 50 to start with. Oops. I've already touched off, so it's 50 thou. I'm down to the final cut um, on this side and then it's over to the lathe so I've got to take 21 thou. Uh, I've measured it both ways as in depth from here to here. Uh, the depth of what's left in the middle and subtracted the 500 we've already taken off and the depth of this and it all comes back the same, 21 thou. So I'm not very good at numbers. But I've checked it twice and I've got a same figure twice, so it's got to be right. So that's 21. And uh, it doesn't take long to rip some heap of material off with the shaper, they're not that slow really. And it's enjoyable to watch. I've got. Um, Got my iPad here with A-bomb adventures going. Um, got this going in the background. Can't go much better than that. So A-bomb, if you ever watch this, mate, I'm enjoying your videos. This should be the final cut. Actually worked out pretty good, nice light cut to finish, 21 thou, it's just, it should finish off absolutely lovely. I was going to give the tool a bit of a home, but I just forgot all about that. Anyway, I'll get back to my video.
723. <coughs> Radio. Now, just show you the way I am. Um, I set my angle on the compound. Um, I learnt this off Everett over at Everett's workshop. Just got some angle blocks, um, 10 degree and a 2 degree. Set them against the edge of your compound. Up against the edge of the one, two, three block. Gently bring it around. Until it lines up. Square onto the one, two, three block. Like that. And that's spot on 12 degrees. Um, great idea. Works very well. Thank you, Everett. Not bad. Could be better, but
748. done I end up getting some um, 1500 wet and dry and just give that a bit of a clean up so come up with a nice good sharp edge so now I'll put it back in the shaper I'll take these edges off um, down there somewhere like that so that'll okay come back to there somewhere And it's just a matter of putting it back in the lathe and shaping this bit down. So, really not much to go. Just take these edges off and then we'll get a game plan to get them nice and neat. So, yeah, just get these bits here, I'm trying to say. Anyway, I'll get set up in the shaper and bring this back, guys. Um all set up in here, uh, taking a 50 thou depth of cut straight up, um, roughly about here will be the end of the cut, um, yeah 500 thou deep in total. Just gonna take it easy the first couple of runs. Guys, cracking along here slowly, surely. Pretty happy the way it's coming up so far. Uh, not really that much to go on this side, then I'll just flip it to the other side. And there are these little corners to take out there in the load so and then it'll be finished and I can heat treat it. Um, put some cold blue on it. Make it look all pretty for the old fella. Yeah, definitely cut that one. Um, I've been keeping it back to a five thou step over because yeah, there's only a short pass here and any hard on them. Like if you do it any ten thou step over, it's a bit hard on the tool. Uh, just 
seen a little bit hard on the turn anyway. This is the final pass on this side. Um, when I measure down to the, the parallel sitting on, it was an inch and a half to start with. Um, I want a half inch square when I'm finished, so it's got to be an inch left and it's spot on an inch. So all my calculations must have been right. So this is just an eight hour cut. So it was left to take off. Um, they're pretty happy so far. Uh, that hole will open up more once I file the inside of the holes out. The inside of the hole, the edge of the holes, will open up that hole a lot more. Um, that'll be good. So, I'm going to bring you guys back when I've flipped it over and um, had me dinner and a shower and a sleep and I'll bring this back tomorrow. This is the second last pass. Um, I had 35 there, 34 there roughly to take off. Uh, I've split it into two, I've got taken 25 now and I'll measure it again and take the remainder. Just put a fresh hone on the tool. Um, just cutting a lot nicer. I was getting a little dull, so quite dull really. Um, so I'll do this pass, I may measure it again, do another pass, and then we'll be back into the lathe to form the back side of the taper. So, and it hasn't taken all that long to do this side. I'll be know, half hour, three quarters an hour. Well, I've been in, you know, about to go and make a cup of tea and all that sort of stuff, so it's taking a bit extra time. Anyway, that's where I'm up to, guys. Crack and all just guys. This is the final cut. Just make up on that edge. This brings up a subject. I put a photo up on YouTube Machinists on Facebook the other day, or yesterday, whenever it was, when I started making this. And I was told, just kick this up, I was told the clapper box was facing the wrong way. Um, now, I believe I've got it right. Um, I've watched Adam Booth said he's and he's explained it and if you can see when the ram's going back the tool lifts up away what the radius is away from the edge of your cut if the clapper box was tipped the other way it would want to if it caught on this edge, on the return stroke, it had pulled up into that edge. This way, it kicks it away from that edge. You can see the radius as I tip it back. So, um, I just thought I'd explain that, um, as I'm not real good at explaining things, but yeah, I got told that the clapper box was facing the wrong way. Now the way I always remember to do it is your job starts out this side here and your table traverses that way. So have the wide piece like a mouth. So it's actually, the way I think of it is that the job's getting fed into the mouth. So wide end this end, narrow end, as the tool goes back it lifts it away. 
So I hope I've explained that in a way that it, you can understand how I set mine. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd mention that anyway, guys. Um, I've just roughly taken the burr off this edge of the square. Um, didn't quite hit it spot on. So that's 497. Um, 498, 497. There. Chip it over. 501, 501. So. It might be 495. So it's a little bit out, but it's not much. Not much. I don't think the old fellas are going to pick that up with his hand. I don't think. Um, so now it's just a matter of put chucking it up on the lay in the lathe and gently taking these edges off. And I may even bore it again just to take some of the thickness out of here um, just with a very slight you know, one degree taper or two degree taper come in and just to clean that out a bit there so there we go I'm pretty pretty happy with that uh, got the compound set to 30 degrees um, I'm just going to shape that back to the to the line roughly and I'll just jiggle the um, Jiggle the degrees around Or the compound around and just gently shape it in so then I can always finish it off with a file in the vise anyway to get it all nice and pretty so It's going to be fairly slow going You can see it there, but it is slowly coming to shape. <laughs> I stuffed up there and I just went in touch too far and nicked the square, but it's anyway, it'll clean up. I'm going to round the corners off with the just draw file at the edge of this the shaft or the handle. I'll draw that draw file there and round the edges off. Um, so I've just got to shape this a little bit, which I may even. Just do with a file, I think. So the side of it's pretty much finished. Um, so I think now I'm gonna put a boring bar back in and just probably set it at a one degree tape or something and just try and just open up the back of this hole a fair bit more. So it's probably not the camera's probably not in the best position there, but I think you get what I'm getting at. So. Yeah, I'll get set up for that, guys. I've made a number of passes, just very light ones. Um, so I'm probably going to make this next one my last one, I think. Um, I've got a file out, which you can probably see. Maybe there's a little, like you got the, the arc of the circle in there. Um, 
by the time I file that out, these edges, the four edges off flat, that'll open up a lot more. And we have to get a square the tool up and just sort of play with this end a little bit, just by eye. But uh, I think it's coming along pretty well. done is a three-quarter one and I went ahead and made an inch one as well or inch and a quarter sorry so inch and a quarter is nowhere near as good as a three-quarter one but I'm sure it'll do the job um, I draw filed the handle on this this one here I hit it with one of them little scotch bright jobs on the air grinder so I'm sure the old fella's going to be pretty happy to have them um, I have got some cold blue coming so I am going to cold blue them and oh, I've got a heat yeah just harden the end of them as well so that's just something I'm going to do later on so I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out um, a fair bit of time with a file on this one, but um, overall, I'm pretty happy. So, a couple of days of playing on the machines certainly paid off. Anyway, guys, thanks for coming along on the journey and. Um, That there may be my next project using the indexer. So I've just been working out how to determine the lengths, uh, determine the depth of cut when you're putting a hex on a on something. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that, and I'll see you on the next mission. <laughs>